Okay, to I'm uh, recording the session now, and let's uh, just reiterate the step what we did yesterday. So for FMW installation, first thing what we need is our uh, FMW infra structure product. Compatible Java and let's check what we have in our system. So Java So this is the version of Java we are using Let's go into software so that we can see So these are the softwares we need. We need Fusion Middleware, Infrastructure, and then this is the JDK which we need for installation. RCO. So RCO is not separate as such. When you install this Fusion Middleware, RCO comes as part of this. So I'll tell you from where to run RCU. So if you are in Fusion Middleware, so this is the path where you have to go and run dot slash RCU. Once your RCU is created, next step, next step is you have to run config script. Which will be at this location. So this is the script at location this okay so first thing would be uh, you set up your java okay mm. uh, okay set up your java first uh, that you know already how to do it we have seen it once that is done uh, then you can run this RCU okay and so this installation once Java is set you can do the installation let me just change it I'll make it first so that we know this has to be the first step Okay, so install this. That means when I say install, you take the binary and set the path and everything. Okay, once that is done, you have to run this as Java hyphen jar followed by this jar file. I'm just mentioning this so that we know what we are running. So set Java first. Then run this as uh, this is for installation. Once installation is done, we can go ahead with RCU. For this prerequisite, only thing is the database should be available. And then we can run config.sh. So once config.sh is run, our domain should be created. Once domain is created, Okay, so once domain is created, then uh, we have to start our admin server. And once admin server is up, it should be available. Okay, so what this is what we did yesterday. 
admin server and we logged in and when we saw only one thing is now there is a change here if you see my IP has been changed yesterday it was 103 now it is 104 so I need to validate once that I have the correct IP so anytime you guys are not able to follow just let me know so that we'll stop there and see so this was our domain which we created or you can do one more thing whenever you are creating an environment keep it same as this so that we are all on the same page and if there are any issues we can just see so this is the domain fmw domain which we created okay now let's see there would be a change in a file so what I'm going to do is I'll go to config this is where my config file resides let me check for my server so IP would be 192 you see this so listen address so this has been changed and I think something should be running let's see if admin server is running okay so my admin is running and it must be running on a different port which is not available anymore so I'm gonna kill this one for now okay now what happens now if I start my server will it be a success No, because admin server is not running. Yeah, so admin server is not running. That means I should start my admin first, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so let's see if we can... Admin server doesn't come up, I think. No, so admin server is down now. If you'll see this. Yeah. So, it was running on this port. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yesterday we saw we logged in. It was running on this port. Okay. But let, okay, so now it's not loading in. Okay? Yeah. And let me try to start it. Let's see what happens. So this also gives you a chance to understand how IP changes affects your system okay so as I told it is asking for username and password that we will set up we'll see how to make it permanent right now I'm trying to start admin okay so you see this there is a failure yeah. okay and failure is the network adapter error I I error network adapter could not establish the connection that means it is not finding the desired network to be connected to it it cannot bring up the IPs okay and see it has forced shutdown itself it says no route to host Okay, what does this mean? No root to host. Now, I'll tell you. So, if you check your configuration, if I do IP config, what is my IP now? This is my IP, 192.168.0.104. Okay. And now, if I'll go to my config, This is my config.xml where let's search for admin. I have to look for admin server port. So listening port is 7102 and that is SSL1 and this is 7100 is mine. Now name is admin server that's fine. Now you see here listen address. 
this says 192.168.0.103 okay but my current system IP is 104 that means I will have to change this IP to the latest so what I'll do is uh, for now I'm doing mask and remember this I'm editing this for now but you guys do it whenever you know you take a backup first and then do it if you want to do any changes so I'm changing this to 4 okay so I have updated all my IPs so IP is updated let me just validate it once So there is no 103 and there should be 104. Now I have updated my listen address in config.xml which matches my edit address of my system. Now I can try to start my server again. Let me start it. asking for the username and password okay it is still failed for the same thing let's see which IP it was trying to connect Okay, let me check for database as well. Now, the previous one is gone, but this time it is failing for SQL exception that means now it can connect to your system but it cannot connect to database the reason being database would be running on it's still on the previous IP so let's check for that so this should be down by now okay it's down let me do one more thing let me go to JDBC crap 192 sorry okay so you see this in all these JDBC files as well because it is still referring to the old server name I will have to correct these ones let me check first where it appears right so it is just as one path so I'm just gonna update this to the latest the first file is done updating the second one
and this is the last file which I am going to update the IP okay let's go back trying to start it again Logs is open, default authenticator is validated and after this it should proceed if it fails. Okay, it failed again. Now let's see for this time it failed for, okay it says again a SQL recoverable action could not establish. So again it is uh, sending it for the JDBC thing. Okay. So let's see that. Let me see if anywhere else we are missing that. Okay, this is fine. Okay, so there are few places where it is still referring to the older one. Let me correct this. What else? GPS config Okay, let's see where else we are missing Okay, now it is at EM level. Okay, let me write this as well. 192. So applications, meta, nf, im, the properties. Okay, so this file. Okay, so it says no references found. Let's go back and see.
Okay, so it has done default authenticator. It is checking for username and password this, at this point. And loading identity certificates. Right, so it's proceeding this time. So, okay, what happened here? So, it was saying no route to host. The reason being there was a wrong IP, uh, which was as per yesterday's installation. And maybe I booted my system, so the IP got changed. So I had to change the IP. So what I did here, let's see for the issue first. So issue was no root to host. Or we can also say IO error network adapter. Okay, so if you do installation for the first time, you'll not find these issues. But in case you bounce your VMs, if you are using DHCP, then your IP can change. Uh, you can also make it a static by giving it just one IP, possible. So if that happens, just check for your system IP, check for your VM IP. IP, that will be your init address run if config command to check it okay so it is still starting so check this uh, and this will give you IP of your system for example in my case if I run it if I run if config it shows me two address. One is loopback address, which is my local host, and another is this address. Okay, I will also need to do one more thing. No, oh, sorry. Okay, I have not added it in sudo. So for now, let me become root. I'm also going to edit this one because my IP got changed. So this changes should be available here. And you see, so this is now running. Let's check it. So my IP is this, my port is 7100, so my default should be listening here. Four, one, zero, zero. Yeah, so my console is up. So you got this thing, why we were having this issue? Okay. Right. So, okay. So, this is uh, the console. Now, before we move here, now you remember it was asking for username and password. So, we'll short that out first. So I'm going to shut it down. I'll do control C and it's shutting down. Now, when I'm starting my script, it is asking for username and password and I have to make sure that next time I do it, it should not ask for it. So I'll go to servers. Servers is where all my servers will be created. So right now only admin server is running. I have started only admin, so admin is running. So I'll go to admin. And then inside this, there should be a security folder, which is not there. So I'll create a folder called security. Okay. So what I'm doing is, enabling boot.properties boot .properties file.
So I'm gonna assign a boot dot properties file where I'll specify my username and password. So next time I start my admin server, it should not prompt me for the password. Okay. And its steps would be domain home slash servers slash admin server okay so first we'll do cd here then mkdir we have to create a folder with name security which i have done and then get into security so we have done this far now we will create a file here boot.properties this is the file and this will be the content so we'll assign it the username and password which was created during configuration so i assigned password as weblogic1 so username was weblogic and password was weblogic1 so what i'm going to do is i am creating a file boot.properties and then values will be this username created during config I'll mention this password used during config so when you run your configuration wizard at that time the username and password you have passed to create your domain I'll mention config domain same you have to update it here now I've created this file I'll save it let's see the con contents so user name and password is being seen let me try and start my server now so this time if I start it should not prompt me for the password instead it should pick it from boot.properties file and also remember this first time I showed you this file and password was visible right now so I can see weblogic weblogic1 so let it get started so you see this so it has done default authenticator it has come to this level but it has not prompted me for password so it means it has picked up so if security rearms is gone if this is done yeah so this is done so it has not asked me for the password you see this is step okay it is fast yeah storing boot file let me just show you capture that for you this one so it says storing boot identity in the file the file which we created you see this so this is the file which we created just now and we have uh, given username and password there for weblogic so that this startup can use this file and should not prompt us for the password okay now let's see what happened here okay let it get started once it is started we'll see so so far what we have done is we have we are enabling boot.properties file we created a security directory created a file boot.properties and assigned username and password and then it started the server started admin server with boot.properties file credentials stored here okay maybe couple of more few seconds or minutes yeah so it started 
So we are back and now you start your server any number of times it will not prompt you for the password. Let's just see one more thing. Okay, so we checked the file last time. It was showing me username and password similar to this. So if I did cat boot.properties before startup, my content was this. So this is what I saw. So before starting the admin server, let's see what has changed now. You see the difference? Now if I do cat, there is a change. So before starting the admin server, I entered username as weblogic and password as weblogic1. But once I have started admin server, these password and username is encrypted. So this at a starting admin server encrypts the password and username inside this boot.properties file. So it will be the same file. It will store username password but in encrypted format so that it should not be visible. So once you start after first start of your admin server, these passwords should not be visible. So if someone comes here, they cannot catch what is the password. So username and password will be restricted. Right, so that's about boot.properties file. So let's go to our console now. Weblogic. Weblogic 1. Okay, now we'll do a walkthrough of this. So what all things got assigned so far. You see this, this is the difference. So when we were in development mode, under view changes and restarts, there was nothing. Now this is production mode, so we are seeing log and edit. That means any change we want to do on our system now. Let me expand it a little. Yeah. So any changes we want to do on our system, we'll have to do log and edit first and then do it. Let's see what we have now. So we created this environment. Let's go to servers. So admin servers is created and we also created two managed servers, but we have not restarted it so far. Uh, let's check for deployments if our deployment is fine. Okay, so you see the difference here between a generic and a FMW. We are getting list of libraries here. So I can see probably about 10 here. Let me just customize it. We can also customize many tables within WebLogic. So what customize does is I can choose the number of rows. Let's say I'm choosing 100 so that everything appears here. So showing one of 54. So it is showing me all 54 files. So these are the library files. So that's one difference. So when you do it with future middleware, you will get these extra libraries. You get these resource adapters and you know EMs, DMS applications and other things. So this tells you the type. So we have these libraries with and it also tells you targets. So you remember when we did configuration at that time, these libraries, they were getting deployed to admin server, but we manually we also deployed it to other managed servers so we deployed it to two managed servers so we have selected all three and while choosing while during configuration we have assigned these libraries to admin server as well as to managed servers now applications we did not assign any of the applications to managed servers so our applications 
will be targeted to admin server so these applications will be targeting to application server for example resource manager dms application your em console they are all targeting to admin server now in case library is something which is will be used by system for its functioning and if you just want to concentrate on application you don't want to follow these libraries because libraries you can see and you know that yes my library is working but you just want to go with application you can click here which is exclude libraries when displaying deployments so it will just show your deployments and libraries will be hidden so when i did this i see this okay so my application is visible now and all libraries uh, will be in background it shows showing one of six so that doesn't mean my library has gone i have just hidden it so that it should not be visible on the screen so that i can concentrate what are applications are there in my system so i have these applications so let's say dms applications which are installed by default let me check okay if i want to check any of the applications i'll go to testing and let me check so this dms page should come up yes so i can see a dms page it should be same so this is dms one which comes default by system okay now let me check for some other you see this one this em so it comes with fusion middleware and we can get our em as this as well so if i'll type 192 my IP colon 7100 slash instead of console if I'll type EM I will be getting my fusion control fusion middleware control page which will prompt me for the username and password and it can also give it directly because I have already logged in through console so I think it will log in by default okay so you see this so this is our console which uh, gives us facility to changes do the changes in the environment to control the environment and change resources similarly fusion middleware control also provides us with the similar facilities so as i told during fusion middleware we get console and we also get the em so console is what we see here and this is our em let the em come up okay so our em is up now from this administration console it provides you a graphical interface you know uh, through which we can easily track our environments for example you see here so this is the domain fmwbisp domain this fusion middleware is for this domain under this weblogic domain you have monitoring under monitoring you can monitor health of the system you can check for deployment servers cluster jdbc data sources messaging so it provides lot of uh, opportunities to check and ch make changes to your environments or monitor your environments and control your environments you have this control where you can start up your servers clusters loggings you can also check for logs but at the this page when we log in you say this it shows you the server one up two down so we have three servers all together our admin server and then our ms1 and ms2 so one is up that means admin is up which shows here but two other servers are down which will be our ms1 ms2 cluster so we don't have any clusters as of now deployments it shows one up one down and domain partition we don't have any domain partition as of now so if you want to see what all servers are down you can click on this
page is not coming properly let me just refresh it once See, it also uh, gives you the detail about admin server. So your server name is admin server, host is this, listen port is 7100, SSL port is this. One second. And same thing here, I have logged in with WebLogic user. If I want, I can go away with it. It gives you the version of Fusion Middleware, Control 12C. And what you see here on this, same facilities will be available here. So it's all same. If I want to check for something, let's say, for example, we checked for, let's do a comparison. So if I want to check for my deployments, I can see these deployments in place. Let me check the same thing here. So I want to check for my deployments. Okay, so let me go to the other one. This page is not visible properly. Okay, so you see here it shows you the deployment OPSS REST and then WSM PSM. So this is down because our managed servers are not running right now. So whatever you see here, you can see it from here. Let's check for JDBC data sources. If I'll check for data sources, so I can see five data sources here and same thing should be visible from here. Yeah, so I can see one, two, three, four, five. So there are five. So uh, we can do changes from Fusion Middleware Control or we can also do changes from con or console. And we can start up or uh, stop servers from here as well. Now, uh, let me check from Node Manager because I have to start my server. And these two servers has to be started. And also if you'll see, one of my deployment is down. So it is not down actually, but it has never been started. So WSM PM and the reason it is not showing active because these two servers are down and this is deployed to these two servers. So I'll have to bring it up. Before that, I'll have to check for my node manager. I've created my node manager. So this is my node manager. Let's go to monitoring and check. Okay, so it is inactive. That means it's not running. Let's check at server level. Let me check at server level if my node manager was running. So my node manager port is 557. Oh, sorry. Right, so it shows node manager is running, but again same, this node manager would be running with yesterday's IP, which may be wrong. So I'm gonna kill this one. And before starting this, I will check for my node manager directory once okay so in node manager properties okay ah okay I think I killed the other one this one I never started no problem so I'm just updating this so this becomes 4 and rest all should be okay. Secure listener, I'm making it false. Okay, and I'm going to start my node manager now. So I'll say no hub dot start node manager. Run it in the background.
So it says it has started. Let's go and check it again. So I'll click on monitoring. Okay, although my node manager has started, but it still it shows inactive. Let's see. Let's validate here first. With the port, I'll check. My port is 557. So it says it is running. It is giving me the process ID as well. Let me check for the process. Okay, so I can see this that this is running. So definitely my node manager is running. What may be wrong? Let's see the configuration. Uh, let me check the server. The server is assigned. Okay, so server is assigned. That's not a problem. Right, so what I may be missing here. Let's go to node manager check. Right, so my listen address is 104, which is correct. My listen port is 557, which is running, I see. But you see this. I have mentioned secure listener as false in my node manager dot properties but here it says SSL so I'll click on lock and edit I'll make a change I'll make it plain here and save it now remember this in production environment any changes you do to the system it will first you have to click on lock and edit and then it will ask you to activate those changes so I've done this change and saved it now until I activate it will not be a success so it will not be reflected to the system so I'll click on activate changes and now it's being done let's check in the monitoring again okay so it still says SSL enable let me see Okay, so because it says SSL enabled, let me see it is plain socket listener. Here it is fine. Let me stop and start it again. Okay, so it is stopped. Let me validate it. Yes, it's gone. Starting again. Okay, so it's missing something. Let's see what it is. Go to configuration, check for node manager. I made it plain, 557. So that is being right. Let me do one thing. Let me start it manually first. Okay, and check for node. So this is fine. This IP is okay. Let's check for the log. Okay, so it doesn't show anything. Looks okay to me. Let's see if it complains for anything. So it has picked up this IP. Start web logic. Tick 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 tick. So this is fine. Okay. Right, so uh, I think I'll have to start my admin server once to get those changes through.
and this should be shut down from here okay so my admin server should be running now let's see and let me shut it down for now okay so that also gone seven one zero zero okay so still it is available so let's wait for some time until it goes okay it says stopped here Okay, one more instance to go. So one is gone. There is one more TCP connection is still showing on IPv6 address. Okay, so it's gone. Now we are good to start. So this time I'll start with no hub because I know my password. It will pick up my password from boot properties file. Sorry, no hop. So remember this when I'll bring down my admin server at that time, my console as well as my EM console that means EM fusion middleware control both will not be available the reason being both are deployed to admin server so if I'll bring down my admin server my console will be down and my fusion middleware control both will be down and as soon as console is up both will be available so just waiting for it to come up Right, so this is what we have done it today so far. So uh, first thing was uh, issue with no root to host. There was issue with the IP, so we updated IP in the files, and then it started our admin server. These are the steps which were followed to create this domain, FMW domain, and then we change the boot properties file so that environment can start without prompting for the password because if you are in production mode it will ask you for the username and password until you don't provide it the startup will not proceed so to avoid that we can create boot properties file and specify the password here and also when boot properties file is created with username and password once server is started those password username and password will be encrypted and don't worry about this uh, that username and password it can be at the top or bottom only thing is username and password entry should be there now our server is running so let's see now fusion middleware should be available control and our console should be available as well yes so this em takes a little time to come up meanwhile let's log in here Okay, so we got this page as well. And then let's check for node manager again.
okay so I can exit from here and let's start note okay it says it is started on host BISP 5557 okay so you see this now it's reachable so I've started my admin server and then I started my node manager and now it is uh, reachable only thing is the changes were not in sync with admin server so I had to start it now as my node manager is up and I have already assigned these two machines to that I should be able to start my managed servers let's check so this is starting we can check for the logs and backend let's go to the backend and check for the logs so now this server should be created let's check servers and Earlier we only had admin server but now we have started both so both these servers are available I'll go to any one of them and check for its log so I'll check for out file what it is doing so node manager is starting it it says server change to starting so server is starting now it has created this log as well and logging in messages there so at front end it just shows us the progress oh one second Okay, I got some delivery so I had to collect it. Right, so let's see what is happening at the back end. Okay, it's still starting. So it has done uh, loading configuration, say is a standby starting maybe a few more minutes. Okay, so we will keep today's session till here. Any questions you guys have so far on this? So that you know and also I would like you to follow you guys till here so that you can at least uh, create your domain, create your admin server, manage servers and set up node manager. I think you should be comfortable with it now. Yeah. Uh, you want me to share this file um, to you? Yeah, share it with us. I mean it will be like uh, you know as we can if we mess up anything we can just see that yes so I'll just save it and let's say web logic setup it is on my desktop okay I think I have sent you guys mail so it should be there let me check Mohan Rakesh this is yours right Rakesh the first one is yours right Rakesh web logic setup and then yeah. and uh, while well, I had a small doubt uh, what we did is uh, we have set up a data source today I mean uh, like if, okay so don't worry about that because we will see that later so that data sources which we saw today it is created by default okay so when you do fusion middleware installation mm -hmm. at that time uh, no 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 I was asking a small I mean other doubt actually yes yes ask yeah, me. you imported on that day yeah I have seen that actually Fail to initialize the application due to error weblogic.application.module exception and uh, socket timeout exception connection timed out and uh, after keeping I mean after initializing that what we call uh, one data source the managed servers were went into admin mode 
Okay, okay. So you are saying about your environment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. So uh, check for your data source. Maybe it is not connecting because okay. if manage server goes to admin mode, that means uh, there can be a couple of scenarios, but most of the time it will be with your data sources. So okay. maybe your data source has been changed or uh, there is some change at the database level itself. Okay. So one example okay. I'll give you uh, that uh, let's say the database passwords were changed. Okay. okay. So someone has changed your schema passwords. Now in web, your web logic, I'll just show you for now. Okay, although we will refer it in later section, but just we'll show you for okay, now. Okay, okay, sure. One sec. It might be due to the maybe wrong deployment also as well, right? Yes, that is also that. possible. So if your deployment is referring something wrong, okay, or maybe, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes what happens, developers, they hard code something in your application. Yeah. Okay. okay. For example, they are hard coding a particular database and its port, which, is, which never existed. Okay. Okay. or they are trying to connect a service which does not available on your it cannot run on your server so at that time that hard coding also affects okay and uh, your server can go into admin but data source connectivity oh, okay. if there is a problem then definitely your managed server can go down but whatever it is it will always be available in your logs so if you go into your okay. log and yeah. it comes to admin right immediately before that it tells you why why it is going into admin Okay, okay, sure, sure. Okay. So, like, what I was saying is, I'll just show you for now. Okay. Sure, sure. No worries. Uh, I got what you're saying. If we just queue that connection pool and all, right? So, you do one thing. If you can go one of the data sources, click it like this. Okay. okay. Go to monitoring. Okay. Okay, right now we have data sources here and go to testing okay select the server that is deployed and test for it okay sure so that should be reachable okay it should be successful if it raises any exceptions or anything then there is something wrong okay sure sure i'll just check that okay and also uh, regarding uh, yesterday's bamboo thing uh, uh, i mean you one second uh, are you free now like for two minutes yes yes tell me just two minutes uh, once I will uh, share my screen if you give okay Can I share my screen once yes yes so just uh, this server has started so I'll just show you and close this oh, okay, okay. okay okay and okay. so it has started successfully and yeah I would expect you guys to do it till here so that we are at least ready with our environment okay what i did is like i have installed java and i have installed that uh, yesterday i messed up with that middle, middleware what i call web logic installation right yeah so I again install that web logic oracle web logic admin console is up and all okay no problem See, I, this, uh, this is the time you guys should get a chance so i would say you instead try installing it multiple times so that you yeah. will, you would also know if you try to install the software multiple times on one system are there any issues because sometimes when you install it and you do don't do a proper cleanup next time when you install you find issues so if you do that you will yeah. get more okay so i'll appreciate that you try installing it you know once you are installed once you are created domain do it one more time okay sure sure i did that and i haven't run the rcu file that is for database right yeah, that is uh, when you will do Fusion middleware. So see, first time what we did is only generic installer. So for okay, that, yeah. you don't need RCU. Okay. But when we go for Fusion middleware, like you are seeing these data sources and other things now, right? That is only possible okay. when you have database ready and then you have to create RCU first and then go for configuration. Okay, I will uh, create the database. I mean, I will install the database and later on I will do the RCU thing. Yes, I mean, yes, that means, do that please. Yeah, that's what. Okay. Yeah, see, this is what I am getting. Why it is not able to run java.exe? Okay, what it says, uh, hold on, I have minimized it instead of. Okay, yeah. so the java.io exception cannot run program. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it tells you, you see this, 
the file name or extension is too long. Okay, which I mean, uh, according to him, which one is too long for him? This okay, is so what this, you have given me. Right? Which one you are trying to run? It is the same thing. This oh, is okay. one. This, this one. Yeah. This one you have shared with me. See, that's what I have asked. Temp directory C work in that test deploy. Okay, that is fine. Then app needs Okay, to and again that. source so source is C work and C work test deploy calendar dot work. This these these two are correct, right? Yeah, yeah, that is fine. So destination directory is correct. Okay. Now show me your screen again. Okay. Yeah. I've got one error. What I did is like uh, in this task definition, the WL deploy, mm -hmm. I have added the class path weblogic.jar. Okay. And that's gone. And again, I have given this WLST. Okay. That's it. I mean, those two are gone, but why this is. And at last, see, uh, after this two, three exceptions, it stated the, the weblogic deployer execution failed. Simply. Why I don't know these steps are failing. This is what uh, stopping. If I think if this surpasses this thing, uh, we can. So your deploy, that. WL deploy is correct. Your IO exception cannot run. Bro. Game calendar fine. Source is okay. Admin URL D3 local host. Okay, user password deploy. That step might be any wrong if you want to check uh, this tip. Okay, which version of WebLogic you have? 12.2.1. I mean, one second, I'll just check. I think 12.2.2 is what you had the other day. No, no. This is. Okay. That is uh, in that one, right? Double L server. Sorry. I mean, where I can know that? Where can I know that? Uh, actually, you want me to open the? I mean, in the console, I will be knowing that, right? Yeah, console anyway. It shows you. Twelve C. That. So yeah, you see it here. At, at bottom left, twelve dot two dot one dot two is what's your version? Okay, version. Okay. Okay, so that is the latest one. That's okay. So that's fine. Think okay. Okay, and show me your uh, this XML file again. Uh, the build dot XML. Yeah, once if you can see. Yeah, I'm at the top project name calendar. Okay. Temp directory, this directory. You want me to scroll down? Yes, yeah, scroll down a bit. Okay. Okay, username, password. Right. Okay, go back. Go back to your that error. Tell me this. So what I see is your weblogic.deployer, the deploy file, which is there mm -hmm. in your system, mm -hmm. looks different. And this file, this thing you have specified somewhere. Which one? Uh... So the line which I see here for WL deploy, right? That doesn't okay. match with your build.xml. So it should pick it up from build.xml. Why it is not picking from build.xml? You have specified any environment while creating aunt or anything? At at no, your uh, see at Bamboo level, see this one. You can see deploy the entire test deploy application. Okay. 
So there it says your username, password and all. So there is no source there. You see this, there is no source. But in your case, source is coming here. So I think you have created something at your deployment level in Bamboo. Okay. I I mean I'm not okay okay that is not calling this deploy that is yes, what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So it I is not calling I... this deploy. And it is not actually your command line should be something okay. something called and hyphen f build dot xml and then followed by deploy. Okay. See it is going with the build dot xml and again it is running the deploy. Okay, so maybe okay, so it's finding your source through the source you, which you have defined at the top. Uh -huh. Top, in in the sense this one. Uh, let or, me just uh, see. Let me see. So build file. Okay, it is using the build file, which is under test deploy deploying. So where you are running this program from? Uh, B bamboo, right? Come and I mean, okay, okay, yeah, bamboo, bamboo only. Okay. Can you do one thing? Can you change your location to test deploy and run it from there? Have you run it from command prompt so far? No, I haven't run it from my command prompt. Okay, do one thing. Test it through command prompt first and same thing you do in Bamboo. Bamboo. Because I'm so just thinking it is not able to take this uh, C colon slash work slash t test deploy. So here is my calendar dot var and build dot xml in this folder. Okay, yeah. now I need to do ant deploy, right? Yeah. Field. Okay, what it says. Same error. Yeah, so it should work here first. Okay, error is same. Uh, okay. Uh, what is the first line? Uh, you are saying uh, this okay, one, right? Yeah. Uh, no, that's fine. That's fine. The second one I will. In directory, create process. The file or extension name is too long the file name or extension is too long it's... Hmm. so it is not able to take it that far that uh, I mean defining those uh, task definitions uh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking because uh, maybe it's not able to pick a uh, line that long. This long? Can you can you uh, just disable it for now and let's see? Disable both the lines. Oh. No, I think you will have to add that uh, that print statement is there, no? So front end line. Which so, one? Uh, I didn't get. So uh, you see okay, print okay, statement. Okay. Yeah, so before that there are three lines, uh, three characters. Copy that, put it in the front. Yeah, these. And uh, uh, yeah, follow the second one also, do the same. This should be good. Yeah, this should be okay. Okay, now save it and try. Just to make sure it is not complaining about that. You're done? No, it... Okay, I, I thought like what is happening? It, I just did that. Something happened and totaled in zero seconds. It's... Build failed. Problem failed to create a task or type WL deploy. So I think uh, we need to give this WL deploy and uh, I mean and disable that what we call uh, mm -hmm. this one. Okay, you have got time right sorry uh, 
No, I have not got time. I have to leave for office, but uh, I'm just seeing ah. if it can be done fast. Ah, I'll just uh, one second. Just give me. Yeah. Again failed. Same IO exception. It is too long. Okay. So okay. So it is failing definitely for the line. That's for sure. Can but you do one thing? Length, I right? think uh, you can mention it into. Okay, do with the class name. Yeah, just do with the class name because it should pick up with the class name also. See, and oh. now it is showing this one. WL deploy cannot be found. So right. that's why I am giving this class path, and uh, and it is failing. That it is too long. Create process fail. <laughs> mm, because okay, it cannot. Okay, be yeah, I think the time is will not be sufficient for you, right? So we can just uh, do this later. If you got a time, can you just have a look at this error if you want? Okay, so I'll check it later. Just uh, ping me this this one, okay? Okay, this error, right? Yeah, and ping me those two lines that task F which you have included. Okay, sure, sir. Okay, send me in the mail and then I'll check it later in the day. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. Okay, yeah. Rakesh, uh, uh, you have anything to say? He is not there, I think, actually, because... Uh, oh, he may have not. Okay, that's fine. So, fine. So, I'll uh, uh, close the session now and then let's okay. reconnect tomorrow. Okay? Okay, sure. Thank you. Bye, Thank you so much. Yeah. Sorry for being late. Sorry for making. No problem, sure. Bye.